Okay, so this is an overview of how to run the demo scene for chapter two. Chapter one doesn't have any code or project to go with it. Uh, so you'll have the default scene set up, which is demo scene, which is under the scenes folder in the project group. Uh, this demo scene here just contains the light map information. So you can open that up. You'll see you have this setup here, which is similar to what we describe in the, uh, in the book chapter instructions. There's a few things uh, to look at here. The first thing is the player tank placeholder. Um, this is already set up for you. It has an animation component, it has a nav mesh agent, and then underneath there's some uh, the mesh itself with an animator. And then the enemy is set up similarly, except it has a tank AI script. And so this already has the two um, references set up in there. The third one, the nav mesh agent, gets assigned at runtime. So if we click on these, we can see them here, uh, the waypoint transforms, which are P1 and P2. These are just two transforms, two points in space that the enemy tank will uh, go back and forth from. Uh, the other thing we'll notice here is this uh, animation controller, which is the patrol state. Uh, we go into more detail, obviously, in the book. But uh, if you look here, uh, it's this animator here. And so there's an entry point, which goes straight into patrol. And the patrol can go to the chase state if certain conditions are met, which are if the distance from the player is less than five and if the player is visible. Once you're in the chase state, you can potentially go back to patrol if the player is no longer visible, or you'll go to the shoot state if the player is closer than three and is visible. So if you get close enough, you'll try to get closer and then you'll move to the shoot uh, state. From this state, you can go back to patrol again if the player becomes invisible, or back to chase if you get out of range, meaning you're still within three and five meters from the uh, from the uh, player. Um, and I th that's pretty much it here. There's some variables set up. Now for code, um, they're fairly straightforward classes. You have the select waypoint state, um, which will just set the next point on the tank AI. Um, the tank AI code is uh, this one right here. We'll open that up. Now just take a moment. <clears throat> Okay, so the tank AI class, when it wakes up, it does a few things. It gets a reference to the player. It grabs uh, com the component, the animator component that's on it. And if we go back to the project here, you'll see that the enemy um, has the animator component here, which it will find. Uh, point A and point B are these exposed references that we've already set. And the nav mission agent, it grabs it. Uh, it's a component on that game object. And then there's two waypoints. Um, which are uh, put into an array. And we just take point A and point B, which we already know are assigned here. Um, sets the current target to zero, which is an index for the um, for this array of points. So we set it to zero, meaning point A. And when we call set next point, it's gonna go to the next one, which is point B. Um, so now in fixed update, we're constantly updating the parameters that we saw here. So distance from player, whether they're visible or not, and distance from the waypoint, these are getting updated here. So is player visible? and distance from player, and distance from waypoint. Then the rest of the logic is kind of handled through um, this patrol state class here, which is on the animator. It's a, it's a behavior, animation behavior here um, uh, that we add to this as a component. Um, all we're doing here is we're logging out when you enter the state and when you leave the state. Uh, so in essence, when you run it, what you'll see here is that this enemy AI will move to point A Right, and it's a state here where it's uh, moving to the target. And it's gonna reach that point. It's gonna find a new target, right? So you saw that little switch. Um, you entered the patrol state and left the patrol state because you were close enough to the player. Now in this example, we're just showing off how these states work. So it doesn't actually have any logic for what happens when you encounter the, the player, except for this line here where we debug log if you enter the state or left the state. Uh, and that's essentially it for this chapter in terms of the example itself. We're demonstrating a few things, which is the patrol state, and then we're talking about uh, the state machine uh, using mechanism, and uh, a little bit about uh, behaviors, um, state machine behaviors uh, through this class here. So uh, that's it for the chapter two setup. Uh, feel free to play around with it, and that should be it.